Hola amigos, hello, how are you doing? Today we are going to be talking about everything wrong with the MacBook Pro 16 inches. That's right, the MacBook Pro 16 inches is amazing. It's a great upgrade. You got an amazing GPU, amazing performance there, and you got a bigger battery. But we don't care about that. We're talking about the bad stuff. This is the bad stuff you guys want to know about. You guys have been asking me, yo Ash, you've had this MacBook Pro 16 incher. Are you going to keep it? And I'm not. I've actually given away my 16 inch to my girlfriend and I'm keeping my 15 inch. I'll explain why in this video. So this is everything wrong with a MacBook Pro 16 inch. All right. Now in no particular order, my friends, you still got the touch bar. The touch bar is still there. Okay, it's great. You got an escape key, but I don't care about the escape key. I care about the touch bar. Why is it there? <laughs> Apple, remove it. It's rubbish. I want my function keys back. I want to be able to change the brightness of my screens by tapping on it without this nonsense that is the touch bar. Secondly, Fan City. It is, it is twice, almost twice as noisy as my 15 inch MacBook Pro. One thing I don't like about what Apple does, it don't tell you, they don't tell you about the noise levels. So, the base version of the 16 inch, the 5300M GPU edition is actually quieter than the i9 version of the MacBook Pro 16 inch. That one is slightly louder. Apple don't tell you this. So, for you guys out there that want a quiet and cooler experience, get the base model with the base graphics and just to let you know, the base graphics is amazing. We finished. The fans are on max on the 5500M. The fans aren't on max on the 5300M. And score-wise, there isn't that much in it. So, noisy fans, Fan City, you know, something about the Fan City motion. It even ramps up and gets crazy when I'm just Chromecasting a video to my Chromecast. It's not just when you plug in an external display. So it just goes a bit mental here and there. So just, you know, on the plus about fan noise, I've got to say. So some people actually like fan noise. Me personally, I find it annoying. But, you know, for those people out there, you don't need to buy a white noise generator. you got a nice 16 inch there for you. And it sounds beautiful, beautiful white noise. Next up, I'm going to talk about eGPU support. So I spent a good amount of hundreds of dollars on my Vega 64 eGPU and for some bizarre reason, it actually runs slower on my 16 inch than it did on my 15 inch. I have no idea why. And Windows eGPU support. Okay, some people out there with Nvidia cards, they've said it works and it's great. And some people out there say that it works great for them. But for me, and I'm a pretty techie kind of guy, I couldn't get my 16 inch working with my eGPU in Windows. It works on my 15 inch, great, I'm doing all this kind of stuff, but for my 16 inch, it just, it's not working. I'm gonna wait for updated drivers, but a state of play today, eGPU I say is not recommended for these 16 inches, at least AMD ones, until maybe the new ones come out with new drivers and all that kind of nonsense. So eGPU support, a bit slower. Now this guy, this, this, this one I'm about to tell you, you, you just don't, just skip this section if you bought a 16 inch MacBook Pro because once you know about this, you're not going to want to know about it, okay? So I'm just letting you know, skip for the next 30 seconds, okay? Coil Wine. It does exist on this 16 inch. And what's amazing about the 16 inch is the fan noise. So the fan noise masks the coil wine. But if you listen to it and once you clock onto the noise, and I'm going to give you a demonstration of how it sounds, you can't unhear it. Check it out. This is the MacBook Pro i9 edition and listen to this high pitch coil whine. It's like a hitting sound. So there is coil whine, especially when the SSD card and especially when the SSD and the GPU are hitting it, you're gonna get that core wine. It feels like those 56 KBS modems back in the day. You millennials plus the Z generation, you guys don't know about this. Don't worry about it. 5G, the future, yeah, brainwaves, the best. But there is a bit of core wines. Next up, Mac OS needs to be updated. To, can I just get this guy to shush for a second? Shush! 
that he goes, fan noise over. Yeah, Mac OS needs to be updated. Command center. You just launch up command center, it is blurry AF. So hopefully Apple will sort it out, but you're gonna find some applications are blurry, they're not used to the special screen size. It's not exactly a doubling and all that stuff. It's a weird resolution for Mac OS. So applications are gonna need to be updated. And speaking of updated, you are stuck, stuck with Catalina, I like Catalina. Catalina, amazing operating system. I love Catalina because it is security focused. You're gonna get all these amazing pop-ups about this access required. I like that stuff. But what you lose with Catalina, unfortunately, 32-bit app support. And that's you know the reason why I can't upgrade. I need 32-bit applications. If you guys don't need it, don't worry about it. Just move on with your lives. But for me, for example, if you wanna use Xcode 8.1, the one that allows you to upgrade, Swift code from 1.0 to 2.0. If you want to use that one, you can't do it on Catalina. You can't do it on Catalina. You're gonna need Mojave. You're gonna have to use a VM. You have to all use all this nonsense to get around that situation. And if you want to play some games, Steam games, goodbye, my friends, to all the 32-bit applications. <sighs> yeah, I can't do that. So Catalina is not for me. I like dual booting. I can dual boot. I can switch to Catalina when I want that stuff. But yeah, you're stuck with Catalina on the 16 inches. I've tried installing Mojave, I can't do it. Anyone knows how to do it, let me know in the comment section below because I can't figure it out. Next up, oh, Windows support. All right, you can get Windows on this system, okay? Great, good, good, good on you. But what I recommend you guys do is get an external keyboard and external mouse because unlike Mac OS, where you get amazing touch trackpad palm rejection and all that kind of stuff on Windows. Seriously, the trackpad is the size of my friggin' larger than my hand. Trackpad is larger than my hand. And when I'm typing on the keyboard, my, my palms are constantly touching the trackpad. The trackpad drivers for Windows are abysmal. There's no trackpad palm rejection. So when you're typing away on Windows, yeah, you're gonna get a lot of nonsense happening. It is not a good experience. Not a good experience using a magic mouse. Don't use Apple stuff for that. Get a non-Apple mouse and an external keyboard if you want to do some of that Microsoft Office Excel spreadsheet kind of nonsense, or maybe use a virtual machine if you're using that level of stuff and just save Windows for the gaming. So yeah, Windows support, <sighs> yeah, unfortunately, it's not as good as it could be. I thought they'd improve, but they don't, don't improve in this one. So you know, if you've got an older Mac and you're happy with it, don't need to upgrade for this one. Furthermore, it's still only four and a half ports. Thankfully, they kept the three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Thank you, Apple. Thank you for the courage to keep that. But they got four USB-C Thunderbolt three ports. I like those four ports, but personally, it would be nice. Just, I don't know, you know, you know, I've kind of accepted the port situation, but every now and then I just want to plug something in. I've had to get Dongle City with Dongle City just to use the USB-A's that I still have, SD cards, all that kind of stuff. I personally like Thunderbolt, and I personally like that it's a clean solution, four ports, but it still is only four ports. Maybe next edition, you know, actually, I, I don't know the situation. It'd be nice if they had an SD card, maybe one less dongle for me to carry around. But yeah, anyway, more importantly, I'm gonna talk about CPU performance. Now, I gotta say that the CPU in this guy is actually 1% faster than the CPU in this guy. So when I first got this 15 incher, I was getting in Synbench, 3,200. This guy, I'm getting 3,250. So there's a 1% improvement here. But, but, there is something very important. This guy uses 12 more watts of energy than this one. So to get the same performance, this guy is using more watts, which means they've increased the battery capacity by 20%, but this guy is pulling 30% more energy. So battery life for heavy operations, this one is actually worse than this one. Mind blown, and I'll explain what the situation is, and that's something called CPU lottery. Basically, what, in, what, what Apple do is that they undervolt the i9 processors that they get out of the factory. And with the exact same specs, my friends, the one on the right has finished, it's got 3,172. The one on the left with the exact same specs, the exact same specs, my friends, I'm crazy. It's got a score of 2,784. So while typically these CPUs should perform about the same, some CPUs are better binned than other CPUs. And I have found in my testing a difference of up to 15% performance in the same configuration processor between the MacBook Pros. So they haven't fixed that in this edition. 
you test your MacBook system. This one's got 3,250. This is the base i9 edition, and this CPU actually performs worse in performance per watt ratio than this CPU. So I'd say this is a mediocre, this is an average level i9 base processor that we're getting over here. If you get worse than that score, then I suggest you call up Apple and say, hey, I've got a bad CPU, I'd like another one. If you get better than that, then good, you're happy. So just know that there's a 15% performance delta in your CPU, and this is something coming out of the factory from Apple, and that is the situation it is. CPU lottery is something that you're signing up for when you get MacBook Pro. Personally, when I got this guy, he ran faster than my Vega 20 edition and another MacBook Pro, so this is the guy I settled with because he was faster, but yeah, it's just something, if you care about performance, you're gonna have to do a little bit of returns and exchanges to figure out on the plus side, Apple, they're cool AF. I call them up, I say, yo, my CPU is performing bad. I ran Simbench, and they say, wow, we'll send you another one. They're very, very good on customer support. So don't be afraid, if you're worried about performance, to let them know. Yeah, you can do lots of tests on Cinebench and you just run lots of programs and it just tells you how fast the CPU goes. And the one with the touch bar issue, it's actually 15% slow, even though it's the same product, which is crazy. Next, next up, this is software. Hopefully it'll be fixed by the time you watch this city. But this, this, uh, the speakers on this MacBook Pro 16 inch is popping. And what I mean by popping, it means that it makes a pop sounds every single time you hit the pause button when you're playing anything in Final Cut Pro or even YouTube, that kind of stuff. Pop, 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 pop city. Apple support have said they're gonna fix it. It is a priority bug. So hopefully the next update, they will tune it out. The popping will go away. But right now you're getting a lot of poppy, poppiness. And finally, yeah, I'm gonna talk about the keyboard. Negativity on the keyboard. So yes, these keyboards should be more reliable. They're so potentially more reliable that Apple have not included them in the four year warranty extension program to replace keyboards of the butterfly. And you guys might think, yo, that is a good thing, Ash. I've got a keyboard that's reliable. And I'm gonna say, yeah, you're right, it is a good thing, but it's something you guys should be aware of. When the keyboards, in the butterfly gets bust. Guess what Apple do to fix them? They replace the keyboard, they replace the bottom frame, and they replace, they replace the battery. So you get a brand spanking new battery, a brand spanking new base, and a brand spanking new keyboard to sell on eBay, pristine conditioned Apple MacBook Pro, or as of this guy. Sorry guys, you're not getting your battery replaced. Get Apple Care to make sure you're covered for three years, whereas my 15 inch, oh, oh covered for four years, that's right. It is good to be a loser. And I gotta say one thing about this butterfly keyboard. My 2018 15 incher, its keyboard was so bad, it was just breaking down every few months that Apple actually gave me a full refund a year into usage. So one, I used it for a whole year and they gave me a full refund because the keyboard was so bad, I had to constantly get it replaced. So you know, there is some positives in having some shitty hardware, just saying. So my friends, that is all I have found with the MacBook Pro 16 inch. Overall, great buy. The price, amazing, amazing price. They kept the price cheaper. It's now cheaper than the 15 inch. It's cheaper. And they got a better graphics card, better performance, all this kind of stuff. However, for me personally, I'm happy with my 15 inch. Those are all the bad stuff I could say. This, of course, is a fun video, but let me guys know, let me know, and let everyone know in the comment section below what bad stuff are you guys experiencing with your 16 incher. I'm talking about the MacBook Pro. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the show.